So it's uh, August the 5th, uh -huh. about uh, 4 or 8 p.m. in right. the afternoon. Right. We're going to kind of provide a summary of where we are today and what's going on. Mm -hmm. So with that idea in mind, um, I'm Fong, I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about what you've got going here and where you are and, and share with us uh, what you found. Yes, uh, we have finished like uh, story 12 and story 13 and uh, we got uh, eight measurement points at the end of uh, the uh, story 13 and the middle point and uh, in x y direction so when we apply uh, x direction load 10,000 keep uh, we got the movement in x direction so uh, it's around the 0 0.5 and uh, wait a minute wait a minute for a thousand kips you got 0 0.5 uh, inch of uh, movement um, on the on the north or what what side? What, uh, what's what number? Yeah, this is uh, on so so it's on the x direction of the model. So we will have a like picture later. So so, so this direction is the x direction. So we got the I movement x direction. Okay, they they can't see what we're talking about. So yeah. so we're talking about the the uh, the, the the longer side. Yes. Is that what's deflecting one inch? Yes, yes, the longer okay, side. Okay, and the shorter yeah. side, is it deflecting how much? Let me see that. Uh, the shorter side is, uh, so the longer side is uh, zero point, uh, or nearly 0 0.55, and uh, so the, the longer side is 0 0.55, and the shorter side is 0 0.5 around, so. Okay, so it's, uh, so it's close to being the same. Yes, close to the same. All right, all right. Uh, so now let's take a look in the other direction. Yeah, well, and then apply a, a, a 10,000 keeps load on y direction, and we also has three measurement points. Okay, now th now it's making a difference. Uh, so so the the middle point is a very large dis displacement. Yep. Uh, that uh, yeah. Uh, but the two the, edges are about almost the same, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. So this structure yeah. is actually behaving quite symmetrically all the way around. Yes, looks okay. like two stars. So what about rotation? Have you done that yet? Yes, I have done rotation, but uh, the rotations, they are not in one direction. So when you apply load on one direction, there's some rotation at uh, uh, clockwise and some ro uh, rotation on counterclockwise. So uh, it, it's hard to see the building rotation. Let me see what you applied as a load. Okay. I don't understand what, what you're talking about. Yes. Did you apply a couple or did you apply a moment? Uh, this is the uh, same as the, the x direction at the y, y direction. Let's see the rotation though. Yeah. But one, you should have had a, you should have two forces. Yeah. Both in the same direction, I mean both in the opposite direction but parallel, and then there would be a distance in between. That would be creating a couple, which would be a moment on that structure. Okay. Well, let me see what you got as you're loading. So for this one loading is still x direction, and uh, we read the. But let's see what let, what's that load look like. Uh, ten thousand keep in x direction, so same as the previous one. Except. Huh? Except what? Uh, same as the previous one. Same. How do so, you get rotation out of it? Yeah, and uh, so here is the rotation. That's not what we want. Okay. okay. What we want. No, no, no. Okay. That's not the loading. Okay. What we want is to take a load, okay. either take pure rotation okay. or take a load in the X and another load in the X but in the opposite direction okay, at see. a distance apart, okay. which is pure pure moment. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so actually I didn't apply a, like a rotational moment. So no, I, you didn't. Yeah, you need yeah. to do that. Okay. Get rid I, of any load yeah. that's causing a transfer, mm -hmm. pure rotation is all I'm looking for here. Okay. I'm looking at for what kind of mm -hmm. rotational stiffness do we have. Okay, I all see. Right? So Are you with me here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, I will add like two offset force. And, uh, Absolutely, and they could be 10 feet apart, 20 feet apart, whatever, okay. so that you've got a, a, a huge moment being yeah. applied mm -hmm. that's twisting that structure. I want to know what happens to it. What about this unit torsion at the uh, centroid? Unit torsion at the centroid. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know that that's very beneficial right at this moment. I, th I think yeah. uh, everything I'm doing right now is in the, in the plane of, of the floor. In other words, XY, okay. in the XY plane. 
you know, if we say Z is vertical, it would be in the X Y plane that we're applying everything. Uh, okay. If your if your axis is X Z, then it would be the X Z plane or whatever. You know, yeah, Z plane? plane, which is the vertical yeah. direction. Then it would be the X Y plane. Everything's happening in that plane. Does it move over? Does in which way? How does it deform under a lateral load being applied in the floor at the surface of the floor? Yeah, but you apply a torsion in Z direction. There is no force in the in Z direction. It just makes the uh, the, the 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 floor. Ro you know, rotate, rotate. That's what I want to find out. Yeah. So unit torsion can do the work without. The well, that is that is torsion around the z axis. That moment that we're applying. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're saying. And but we're applying it at the at the slab surface. Mm -hmm. Are you with me here? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And I want to know, with that idea in mind, mm -hmm. how does this structure respond? So we're going okay. to get an angle. Okay. And yeah. that angle is what I'm looking for. What okay. is that angle that cre was created by that moment? Okay. And that gives us a rotational stiffness. Yes. Okay. So what you haven't given me yet is in the x direction a k. Mm -hmm. K. So the k at, the k is basically the same whether. Uh, oh, you do have it. Yeah, the stiffness at x direction. And that's based on average, right? Average uh, yes, stiffness. average eight point at okay, the Okay, so you end. should call that average stiffness yes, in okay. that direction. In the ac average case of x, in yeah. average case of y, yeah. is because stiffness doesn't tell me which way. We yeah. need to know mm -hmm. kx, ky, yeah. and then there will be a key theta. Mm -hmm. right, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, uh, that has key theta. Yeah, I didn't calculate key theta yet. Yeah. So. Well, you didn't yeah. even do it right, so we need yeah. to fix that. Yeah, yes. Okay. Right. Right. All right, so now that you've got that done, then uh, once that's done, mm -hmm. I want you to come in here and let's take one fourth of one fourth. Where's where's where where did the chip the 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 stuff that f got flown off of nine nine one the two twin towers? It it threw stuff over and broke some windows. Mm -hmm. Let's find out where that that's on the south wall, I believe. Those windows. That's where the fire began. Okay. So on the 13th floor, I think it's where that fire is at. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take a look at letting on that south wall take one fourth of that floor mm -hmm. and heat it up to about 1,200, about 13, 1,250 degrees C mm -hmm. or Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to see what I want to see what happens to the rest of the structure when you heat up that system. That's the gases in the, in the in the in the area. Okay. The steel doesn't heat up to that. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend. Let's just say that the steel has no no protection whatsoever, which mm -hmm. it does. We know it does. Mm -hmm. But let's just say that it's got that value of about 600 degrees Kelvin there. Okay. Okay. With 600 degrees Kelvin, and that one fourth of that floor system, I want to know how the structure displaces. Okay. Are I you see. with me here? I see. Yeah. And let's don't use 600. Let's use 500 or something. You know, how many degrees C are, 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 is, is there for a one Kelvin? Do you know? One. Huh? One. I mean, the related the the relationship is. I mean, uh, it's not, not, not slow. one. Not yeah. one. It's, it's 273 degrees C per Kelvin. I believe. So. Okay. I mean, the, the increment is the same. Well, no, I understand, but take, take a look at, go on line. Let's take a look at the Kelvin, which is absolute. And we, what we want is, what's the relationship between degree K, Kelvin and degree C? And I think it's 273. Yeah, plus something, but... Well, I'm, I'm not sure it's plus. It's plus, uh, well, what I mean, uh, Celsius uh, equals Kelvin. So one C minus uh, 273. So, so it's one, see? There's no add-on. It's 274.15, not 273. I thought it was 273. But anyway, that, that's a direct relationship. You got C at 274.5, and you got degrees Kelvin. Yes. All right? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's assume that we have 500 degrees Kelvin. Okay. How many degrees C is that? See, that's, that's, that's just above boiling. Yeah, yeah. Water, right? Yes, yeah, not so 100 degrees C is boiling. Yeah, yeah. So okay. let's say we had 500 degrees Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Let's take one fourth of the corner of that building, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that would be all the way, all the way along that 
So let's go okay. take a look at the windows for private right now. Where, which windows actually got, where, where, okay. which place got damaged? Yeah, do you have this? Do you have a picture the, here at all? The window. Yeah. Which windows? What, what part of the structure may have been hit by the debris? Let's see if we can take a look at that, and then we'll identify this in which one a floor. Well, it'll all be on the same side of the building. Yeah, but uh, in which emails? Oh, it won't be in these emails. It'll be in the original set of plans. I just need to know where. Well, you want to you want to see which, which part. Well, of I, th the I think there was some discussion in the Nice report, which I didn't, uh -huh. that had where the debris struck. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What do you want to see right now? The, the I kind of like to know what part of the building we're talking about. Is yeah. is this so, is this the south side? Yeah. yeah. So somewhere in here. So let's just take one fourth of this. Okay, one fourth off. Yes. Well, or somewhere, uh -huh. you know, and su uh -huh. subject that to, to to 500 degrees. Okay. Kelvin. Okay. And let's see what happens to the rest. Of the, the rest of it's at, at 70 degrees. Yeah. Fahrenheit. Okay. Or, or, so know. only this part is subjected to. Yeah, and what's yeah. going to happen is this whole thing is going to heat up. Yeah, that's right. That has. Uh, okay. Motion. And so, yeah. so you should have a feature in Abacus to enable you to. Yeah. And take a look at how this thing is going to expand. Yeah. And so we know that the steel has yeah. a 6.5 times 10 to, uh, yeah. 10 to the 6 per degree Fahrenheit, right? Yes, right. 10 to the minus 6. Yeah. Concrete, let's just assume that's about 4. Yes. Okay, okay so those, where you have a composite, you have two materials going on in there. Yeah, right? yes, right. And, and uh, so this is going to deform. Yes. I want to know how it deforms. Okay, yeah. So now where is column 79 with respect to this? It's, uh, it's over there. It's, only, it's, yeah, over it's there. coupled to, oh, yeah, this one. to girder 44, I believe. Yes, right. Is that correct? Yes. Enlarge it enough. Where is girder 44? Yes, yeah, 21 multiplied 44 up here. So this is the girder. Yeah, but I'm looking at this column 79. Yeah. There is, I think it's this one. Okay, this is W36135. So what we need, and it, it, theoretically what happened is it fell off of that seat okay, connection, yeah. is what they're saying. Yes. I want to know, so let's go over here to the southeast corner, southwest corner of this building, southwest. Right in here, yeah. put in uh, one fourth of the, that square footage, one fourth of that floor. Okay, one fourth. Put, okay. put that 500 degrees Kelvin. I want to see what happens to the, to the expansion contraction of this, of this building, mm -hmm. to this floor system. Okay. okay. Assuming no fire on the other floor. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> then we'll take a look at both floors. Yeah. With that that temperature. Okay. So we only add uh, like a temperature on the thirteenth floor. Of no, 13. Oh, okay, 13. I okay, think that's where the fire was. Yes. You guys need to verify these okay. points that I'm making. Yes. So, okay. Okay, 500 okay. 500 degrees Kelvin. Okay. Now, with that idea in mind, the other thing I want you to do mm -hmm. is I want you to give, to, to do nothing more than to take column 79 mm -hmm. and give it a modulus of about, uh, I'd say, Let's give it a modulus of around one tenth of its normal modulus, which would be about three, three times three thousand ksi. Okay, one thousand. <clears throat> and let's find out what happens under gravity load due to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which may basically is telling you that it cannot resist the deformation. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. See, if I see. Is the building of kind of support there or there has a lot of formation? Yeah. yeah. Now what I haven't simulated is it falling off of that seat. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll deal with that a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay. So I think you've got some things you can do. Yeah. And then by the end of tomorrow, yeah. you should have that stuff ready for me tomorrow. Yes. Now the rotational speed is to calculate tonight and tomorrow heat the 
uh, floor, one, yeah. one fourth of yeah. floor and get yeah. the information. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow yeah. meeting, I yeah. think it will. Yeah. Okay, and then yeah. I want you to be thinking about uh, taking a, a piece of steel yeah. with insulation on it. We'll say insulation thickness is T. Yeah. And then we'll do heat transfer analysis on it and see mm -hmm. how much time it takes to penetrate to make the steel mm -hmm. at a point that there, it's vulnerable to the temperature. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we will calculate. Mm -hmm. You know, two hour fire is typically a certain amount of insulation for a two hour fire. Let's see what it takes to get that temperature to cause that steel to have a problem. Okay. All right. So we'll do an analysis on that. Okay, yes. Do you know how to do that? Uh, I think, uh, I, yes, there has two different kind of material, and uh, I just uh, hit one point to see how it transfer. It transfer. Yeah, this, I think uh, it uh, should be. Okay. Uh, define several steps and uh, one step, 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 see the okay. time and the yeah. uh, something. Yeah. I think it can get uh, applied on All right. The, well, uh, show me theoretically what yeah. you're going to do because okay. we need to make sure that this is a theoretically correct. Yeah. Uh, time depend It's a time dependent yeah. heat transfer problem. Yes. So we're going to take and, and start at, a, at room temperature with the temperature exterior. Yeah. We're going to apply Q, yeah. which is a heat, mm -hmm. not a temperature, a heat. Mm -hmm. That that heat then is going to cause that in that to increase. Yes, right. And as it increases over a two-hour period, mm -hmm. then we're going to take a look at the, what the steel temperature is at that interface. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Follow me. Yes. As a function of thickness yes. of the insulation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have seen this analysis before. See the video. So okay. Abacus can do this. Thing. Okay. Good. All right. So, Quinn, up to you. You're oh, next. I've been uh, doing t um, test modeling on SAP 2000. So I sent you a report last night. So uh, here is 10 uh, pictures of uh, 10 different, I mean the same model but with different meshing techniques. I mean I did more than 10, but uh, this 10... So uh, are you satisfied where you are now? No, because no, I don't know why. And I, you know, I kept finding, finding mistakes. You know, a lot of you know, a lot of way. You know, I'm doing model testing because it's really hard to be uh, error free.